I think it's transformative, honestly. Um, it, the, the, I'm a primary care physician. Primary care is an incredibly complex system of being able to manage chronic conditions for patients all throughout the state and really throughout the region. University of Michigan draws from a huge region within the Midwest. Imagine a hundred-fold um, bandwidth increase and our ability to care for patients in real settings wherever they are. So if I have a patient that drives down, currently I have patients that drive down from Sault Ste. Marie or from Gaylord. Imagine rather than having them come down for just a blood pressure check or to have me look at a rash, imagine them staying in their communities and us serving as as a, uh, a high uh, bandwidth uh, connection to their homes where then they could just point a camera at their rash and say, Dr. Mangrulker, what is this? Right now, the graininess, the, 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 the real um, clunkiness of that prevents me from making an accurate diagnosis. They could upload all their data for their diabetes, all their data in real rich, uh, rich format so I could track their blood pressures, I could track all their blood sugars, I can make decisions on the fly in a virtual conference with them without them having to leave, without me having to leave, um, and make real decision points that really affect their care over a long period of time. Right now, the number of visits are what prevent us from being able to do that in a real meaningful way. now telemedicine has gone from facility to facility, right? You've got a, a, a facility in uh, Munson Medical Center in Traverse City and they can set up their bandwidth. But now imagine we're doing it not just to another facility but where the patients actually are. Small clinics, small family practitioner offices who, you know, right now maybe 30 or 40 percent of them actually have internet connection. Now imagine we explode that and our ability to really get at where the patients are just massively changes. It changes the equation of what we can actually do. The other thing that is really critical with chronic care, diabetes, heart disease, heart failure, the things that are killing patients in this country, the things that are critical is really the interface of the data, the motivation, the engagement with the patient. And right now, telemedicine isn't set up to do that. Um, not only is the bandwidth not wide enough, it's just not where we need it to be in order to do that. And the reason it's not where we need it to be is it's essentially prohibitive to be where we need it to be. That is in the patient's home or in the small practitioner's clinic so that we can help them. If it's transformative for, for patient care, it is a game changer for education. Right now, we are mo we're in the middle of a revolution in education and learning where students are now demanding on-demand learning. And we need to embrace it in medical student and resident uh, education as well, and we are. But the problem is we need to send our learners where these patients are. So imagine if we sort of configure a new system of education where our students are all over the state of Michigan or all over the region seeing patients. Well, they can't just be there in isolation. The thing that still is critical is for them to have teachers that can help them interpret the information. Now imagine that the teachers remain at the mothership or at a central core satellite area where you, the bandwidth is so wide that a student can be out there examining a patient's heart, talking to the patient, and it being beamed right to a place where their mentor is, where their instructor is. They can place an electronic stethoscope and beam the quality of that murmur or that heart sound back to where the instructor is and engage in a dialogue about what that is. Is this aortic stenosis or is it something uh, less concerning for us? And make decisions on the fly. The mentor can be almost in the ear of the student wherever they are, helping them interpret findings like rashes, like joint effusions, like heart sounds, breath sounds, all of this stuff which right now is currently incredibly difficult to do. You know, University of Michigan has set as a vision statement in its mission to have a be a global partner as a university. Well, part of that is happening through the medical school and our global footprint, and coming up with uh, and engaging really with in collaborations in Ghana, in China. Now, imagine we've got this capability with Google Fiber. We can we can share two ways. We can send expertise there. They can send expertise back here, and we can learn from each other in ways that we never were able to before. We can see conditions that we haven't 
been able to see before and learn from them and uh, not only learn from them ourselves but maybe share some of our expertise as well in ways that we've never been able to do before. So we need to be aware of global flat, uh, you know, global disease. There's this concept of emerging about the flatness of global education, um, sort of akin to what Tom Friedman wrote is the world is flat. We need to understand that health is flat also and we need to understand how chronic care is delivered in other countries, how infectious disease is delivered in other countries and how we can both learn from that. The bandwidth is a facilitating factor for that. Um, it is something that I don't think we've uh, necessarily been able to have access to in ways that could really make it rich for us. I mean, we have to think about the you know, we learn by seeing patients. That's how we learn. We have a foundation, but then in all health professions education, we only learn by being there with patients. Well, what's advantageous of that? It's the richness of the interaction. It's the multi-sensory input of seeing the face, of hearing the voice, of touching or of hearing the different sounds. Well, that's so difficult to do at a distance, and it's so difficult to share with someone at a distance unless you have high fidelity, high uh, bandwidth transmission potential. This would allow us to really get to that level where we could do that at a distance in ways that we've never been able to do before, almost recreating the face-to-face -face interaction. And right. that, I think, is critical both for patient care and learning. I don't think um, either of them benefit more or less. Both really would be advanced in that way. You know, you create a platform and then you create a request for applications. Um, and then the creativity just builds organically in ways that we wouldn't have even conceived of. No one really would have conceived of, uh, you know, handheld devices that could serve as educational modules, you know, four or five years ago until platforms were created that then creative people were able to, to, to latch onto. I think this would have the same exact potential. Um, you just create the bandwidth and then all of a sudden people will have ideas that never we never would have been able to anticipate. Both in learning and in patient care.